Well, good morning and welcome to First Baptist Church. We're so glad you chose to worship with us today and happy Valentine's Day. Isn't it great to know that you are loved? God loves us. So let's all stand together and sing, Oh God, our help in ages past. Bow with me in prayer. What a wonderful moment, oh God, to be able to be back together again after all of these weeks, together one on one before you this day to worship you. Thank you so much for allowing us to come this morning to be a part of each other physically in this place of worship, as well as those who are downstairs. We pray now your special touch of grace that this will be a high and holy hour for all who've gathered this day. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. You may be seated. What a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful sight to see all of us gathered in this room as we did in the early service and people downstairs as we have downstairs this morning also today. So thank you for coming. I've missed so much our being together. Uh, for many of you, uh, we were out for five weeks, but for Joyce and me, because we were in quarantine the last Sunday in, in December because of COVID in our family. Uh, we've been out six weeks. That's a long time, and I just am so excited. I don't even want to tell you what, what time I woke up this morning to get ready to come, and I lay there and, wait, and waited and waited and waited until at least it was a decent hour to get up. So I was so excited about getting back with you this morning. So thank you for being here. What a joyful time to be together in the Lord's house and be a part of each other in the fellowship of worship. If you're a guest among us this morning, we always have guests. We thank you for coming, and I hope you'll sense the touch of the Lord in this place today. Perhaps you've already turned in your deacon ballot, but if not, you've had the opportunity to place them in the little baskets as you came in. If not, later in the service, some deacons will come in front of you if need be, and you'll simply put your ballot in the little basket they'll give you, and they'll go count those, and we'll share that with you later. So thank you for your patience in this as it's taken longer to get it done because of not being able to gather. So thank you so much. A few minutes ago, I walked over to the Youth Ministry Building. I'm so grateful to Chris Wilkinson through all this pandemic. He's worked so hard to have various events for our young people. It's been limited and not able to do everything, but he's worked diligently to keep in touch with our young people, to have events for them. And so Friday afternoon or Friday night started D-Now. Different, not nearly as many. He was saying a few minutes ago, the weekend has just been incredible. All the young people who've come have been so touched and ministered to and walked with Jesus so much. So uh, we want to be much in prayer for him and the others who are leading this morning. Christopher Riles is over there as well as they finish up their time together this morning. How wonderful this week that on Tuesday morning our women can gather for their prayer time. And on Wednesday night at 6.30 we can be back at our prayer meeting room for our time of prayer and Bible study. And on Thursday morning then our men's prayer breakfast can meet at their regular time. So, so grateful we're able to be back together. And thank you for your patience and understanding and for being here today. Now, may the Lord bless all of us as we worship him together today. And let's continue to worship together. So all stand and sing, open up the heavens. We waited for this. 
this day we're gathered in your name calling out to you your glory like a fire awakening desire will burn our hearts with truth you're the reason we're here you're the reason we're singing open up the heavens we want to see you open up the floodgates a mighty river flowing from your heart filling every part of our prayer in this place your glory on our face we're looking to the sky descending like a cloud you're standing with us now lord unveil our lives you're the reason we're here you're the reason we're singing see you open up the floodgates a mighty river flowing from your heart filling every part of our praise show us show us your glory show us show us your power show us Show us your glory, Lord. Show us, show us your glory. Show us, show us your power. Show us, show us your glory, Lord. Open up the heavens. We want to see you open up the floodgates, a mighty river flowing from your heart, filling every part of our praise. Open up the heavens, we want to see you open up the floodgates, a mighty river flowing from your heart, filling part of our praise. Amen. And you may be seated.
It just doesn't get any better than that. See, Freddie Bush, as he's walked with Jesus all these years and touched so many lives, and now stands up and sings for Jesus like that. If that didn't bless you, your heart's dead as a doornail. So thank you so much. Thank you, Freddie. Thank you, Officer. We you bow with me in prayer? Father, thank you for Freddie Bush. What an example he's been for all of us all these years. A man who lived his faith and commitment to his wife and how he's reared his children and grandchildren and great-grandchildren to walk with Jesus. So this morning, as we think about the difficult times we're in, what an appropriate word for all of us to remember how much we need the Savior, how much we need the Word of God. So thank you, Lord, for this special moment each of us has shared today. We thank you so much for loving us as you do. I thank you so much for this church. Church committed to children and young people. Church desiring more than anything else to influence children and young people for Jesus. So thank you for the dear ones of this church who have been giving and supporting the ministry of this church for so long. So that today across the street in our youth ministry building, there are young people whose lives have been enormously touched this weekend. Thank you for Chris and Christopher as they've worked so diligently with our young people. And the leaders who come from different places to share the word of God and influence our young people for Jesus. We thank you. Now because you know each of us personally, you know all about us. You know how often we want so much to be faithful to you. And that's how often we stumble. But Lord, we thank you for not giving up on us. For keeping on reaching out to us to love us and to encourage us. And so this morning as we come before your holy throne of grace, may our hearts be open to the truth of Scripture. As your Holy Spirit will apply that truth to each of our hearts so that we might be better followers of Jesus. As we pray in his name, amen. Since Jesus came into my heart, let's all stand and sing this great hymn. change in my life has been wrought since Jesus came into my heart. I have light in my soul for which long I have sought since Jesus came into my heart. Since Jesus came into my heart. Since Jesus came into my heart. Floods of joy o'er my soul like the sea billows roll. Since Jesus came into my heart, I'm possessed of a hope that is steadfast and sure. Since Jesus came into my heart, and no dark clouds of doubt now my pathway has flown. Since Jesus came into came into my heart. Floods of joy o'er my soul like a sea billows roll. Since Jesus came into my heart, I shall go there to dwell in that city I know. Since Jesus came into my heart, and I'm happy, so happy as onward since Jesus came into my heart. Since Jesus came into my heart. Since Jesus came into my heart. Floods of joy roll my soul like a sea billows roll. Since Jesus came into my heart.
on the journey of a narrow road and those who've gone before us line the way cheering on the faithful encouraging the weary their lives a stirring testament of God's sustaining grace surrounded by so great Let us run the race not only for the prize, but as those who've gone before us, let us leave to those behind us a heritage of faithfulness passed on through godly lives. Oh, may all who come behind us find us faithful. The footprints that we leave lead them to believe, and the lives we live inspire them to obey. Oh, may all who come behind us find us faithful. After all. Our children sift through all we've left behind. May the clues that they discover and the memories they uncover become the light that leads them to the road we each must find. Oh, may all who come behind us find us faithful. May the fire Michelle, thank you so much. Beautifully and worshipfully done. Thank you so very much. Please turn with me in your Bible to John chapter 9. This morning, just one verse. It's such an important verse. John chapter 9, verse 4. John 9, verse 4. Jesus said, as long as, as, as long as it is today, we must do the works of him who sent me. Night is coming when no one can work. Continually, Jesus was teaching his disciples how he wanted them to live. Because Jesus lived with a sense of urgency to do the work his father had sent him to do, he wanted his disciples to have the same feeling of urgency. He said to them, Do your work quickly. The night is coming. And when night comes, you will not be able to do the work you are sent to do. As we make our way through 2021, here's an excellent model for us to see each day as an opportunity to have a sense of urgency to do the work God would have us to do. 
before night comes. May we realize that we have time today to be the Lord's servants. Jesus said, as long as it is day, we must work. Jesus knew there would come a point when he couldn't do that work anymore. So he said to his disciples, do the work you can today. Wouldn't this be a great model for us throughout 2021? Each day, we have enough time today to do the work God wants us to do. Jesus said he did not come to serve. He did not come to be served, but to serve. What a wonderful way to live. As you've studied the Gospels of Matthew, Mark, and Luke, you have seen how Jesus gave himself away every day. He never lived for himself. All the time he gave himself away doing the work God has sent him to do. His only concern was to reach other people, to touch them every day of the world. Isn't this the way you and I would like to live? Wake up each morning. Lord, today I want to be your servant. I don't know what that means. I don't know what you have in mind. It doesn't matter. But Lord, today, I've got time today to be your servant. What a fantastic way to live our days in the year 2021. The older most of us get, the more quickly the days pass. Probably you can remember, before you turn 16, you thought you would never reach your 16th birthday. But once you turn 16, whew, it just goes like that, doesn't it? It's hard to realize that we're already in 2021. The days pass quickly and then another year comes, the year 2021. So this morning, understanding how quickly time passes, may each of us have a resolve to be the best servant of God today we can be. We want to be His servant. Some while back, I read a little statement that came from a pastor, Bruce Thielman, in Pennsylvania. He said one day one of his laymen had come to talk with him about an issue in the church, and the, and the layman said this, Bruce, you know, your pastors are always talking, about, always talking about giving, giving, and giving. But what it really ought to be is you need a, a basic basin theology. Bruce said, what do you mean a basin theology? He said this, the layman did. Do you remember when Jesus was before Pilate and Pilate had the opportunity to acquit Jesus, turn him loose? Pilate asked for a basin of water and he took that basin of water and washed his hands and said, my blood, this man, my blood will not be on this man's head. I'm washing my hands of him. Whereas Jesus, the night before his death, took a basin of water he knelt down and he washed the disciples' feet. feet. So the, the layman asked the pastor, which theology is yours? Which basin? The basin of self-centeredness or the basin of a servant? And so I would ask each of us this morning, as we are entering and going through this new year, may we have a basin theology to be servants of the Lord. And then... Before night comes, we want to be intentional about the specific tasks that we're to have with a sense of urgency. To be intentional. Now, what are our tasks? Let me suggest two. We know that one of our tasks is to reach people for Jesus. Jesus said, I will make you disciples, I will make you fishers of men. And so this morning, as we're entering this new year and going through it, it's important to remember, each of us is challenged to be fishers of men. That's important to remember. Let me just ask us this question. Look back with me for a moment to the year 2020. I wonder how many people we talked with about Jesus in 2020. Now reflect in your own heart and mind for just a moment. 
Each of us talk with many people about many issues, no doubt. But look at your own life. How many people did you talk with in 2020 about Jesus? Wouldn't it be extremely good for each of us this morning to say, Lord, I really want to talk to folks about Jesus. I know a lot of folks who don't know Him. So Lord, as I live this year, I want to fulfill the task You've given me to be a fisher of men. Here's a work each of us can do. Several years ago, I read this legend that's really touched my heart deeply. When Jesus got back to heaven, after going through the cross and coming from the grave on the third day, he met with all the angels there in heaven, all the people who were there. They began to look at Jesus' hands. They could see his feet. They could see his brow. They could see the suffering he had gone through on earth. Finally, Gabriel said to Jesus, Master, Do the folks back on earth really know and appreciate what you did for them? Jesus looked at Gabriel and says, Well, not really. He said, Peter, James, and John know about it, and a few others. And I asked them if they just simply would tell folks about what I had done. And when they would tell folks, they would tell others. And they would tell others until the whole world knew what I had done for them. Gabriel, knowing human nature, said, but Master, what other plan do you have? Jesus said this, I don't have another plan. There is no alternate plan. I'm counting on them to tell folks what I did. All of these centuries later, his plan hasn't changed. So this morning, may I ask each of us, Will we take this task seriously and do the very best we can this year to talk to folks about Jesus? Everybody we meet needs Jesus. Then another task we have that's very specific is to love folks and to share Jesus' love with them. COVID-19 has created enormous problems worldwide. COVID-19 is not just a problem for older folks. COVID-19 is a problem for every age on earth. Think about our young people for a moment. Think about the issues of isolation they go through. Young people by nature visit with each other. They're with each other. But think about for a moment what they've had to go through for the last several months. Think about people in hospitals, in our nursing homes, in our assisted living places, and our people who live alone at home. COVID-19 has changed everything. People desperately need to be loved. So this year, as we make our way through still unknown territory and still so much yet to happen, may each of us as disciples of Jesus this morning resolve we'll do the best we can to love anybody who comes into our path and to be encouraging and to be sensitive to them, to do all we can to encourage folks to touch them and to love them. I promise you, not a one of us will meet anybody this year who doesn't need to be loved. There are enormous problems different from any problems we've ever gone through. So resolve this morning as a servant of Jesus. You'll love folks and touch them in special ways. St. Francis of Assisi was an amazing man. He was not always a saint. He struggled with power. He struggled with wealth, just like anybody else did when he was growing up. One day, Francis was riding his horse near a leper colony that was some way away from the city of Assisi. In that day, lepers still had the same image that they did in the first century. They were outcasts. Francis was riding along on his horse, 
when suddenly his horse jolted. Francis finally got his horse back on track and looked, and there standing right in his path was the worst looking human being he'd ever seen. The man's head was shaved, he had on sackcloth, he was skin and bone. Francis said he had never seen anyone look like that before. He was a leper. He was unbelievable. It took Francis a second to decide what he ought to do. He said the only minute he got off his horse and walked over to the leper. He'd never seen anyone like that. He took the man's bony, bloody hand, held it up, and he literally kissed it. He said he'd never felt anything like that before. He said something amazing came over him as he realized how desperately that man needed somebody to touch him and somebody to love him. You and I will meet somebody today and we'll meet somebody every day of this year who desperately needs to be loved and touched. While there's still time before the night comes, would you determine this morning that you want to give Jesus love to anyone when you can do that for Him? What a way to live. Before the night comes, it's also important to realize we have only one opportunity sometimes to get done the work that needs to be done. We want to resolve that when that opportunity comes to us, we use it. Because an opportunity comes and it quickly goes. So this morning, whatever opportunity the Lord gives you, use it quickly. The truth is, when opportunities come, and they leave, and we don't take advantage of them, often they don't come back. Regret over not doing something that should have been done is just not enough. There's not a one of us in this room who this week didn't know of something we ought to do. But we got busy, got sidetracked, and we didn't get it done. That opportunity could well be gone. So this morning, may each of us have a new resolve. Lord, I don't know what opportunity you're going to give me this week. I don't know what you want me to do for somebody this week. But Lord, please help me. When that opportunity comes, not to miss it, to seize it. Victoria Ney is a pastor of a community church in New Jersey. I receive information from the church there as I've received it for many years. And I, I read with interest what goes on in that community church in Margate, New Jersey. Recently she shared an experience that happened to her not long ago in the congregation she serves. She said that one day uh, one of her members named Jim came to see her and said, Pastor, I want to I want to tell you something that happened to me yesterday. She said she could look at his face and see that something wonderful had taken place. He said, I want to share with you something that happened that you don't know about. She said, he said, yesterday marked 10 years that I didn't have a single drink of liquor. He said, 10 years ago, I, was, I am an alcoholic, and 10 years ago, I was struggling with alcohol, something fierce. It was beating me to death. I was about to lose my job, about to lose my family. Everything had come apart. I was in a terrible mess. I was too embarrassed to come here to the pastor at that time and to talk with any of the other ministers or our staff. I didn't want them to know what a mess I was in. But the Cranfield Church, a few miles away, I knew I could go there and speak with the pastor whose name was Bruce. I shared it with him, my, my plight and my situation, and he was amazing. He helped me get my act together. He helped me get part of AA and get involved with a real relationship with the Lord. And I got my life together. I'm so proud of what he did to help me. And I just wanted to come today and talk with you about this and, and tell you that as soon as you and I finish this conversation, I'm going to drive over there and see uh, Bruce Williams and thank him. I've been meaning to do that for 10 years. But today when we finish, I'm going to go see him and thank him for what he did to help me become a sober man. Victoria said, Jim, 
You didn't know, did you? Two days ago, while in a conference in Pittsburgh, Bruce Williams died of a massive heart attack. She said, I will never forget the look on his face when he realized he missed his opportunity to say thank you to a man who had blessed him so immensely. Is there a note you need to write somebody this week? Is there a phone call you need to make? Is there someone you need to affirm and build them up? Is there someone you need to forgive? Is there someone you need to apologize to? Whatever it may be, before the night comes, do it quickly. Will you pray with me? Lord, what an image you left for all of us to do the work you've given us to do and to do it quickly. Opportunities come and go. If we don't take advantage of them, they could be lost forever. To hear the story of this man Jim in New Jersey, something happened to his life ten years ago. And now he meant for so many times to go and speak to the pastor Bruce Williams who had helped him, but he just never did. And then he lost that opportunity forever. So Lord, this morning in the quietness of this concluding moment of worship, if there's someone we need to say something to, if there's someone we need to express gratitude to or to apologize to or to build up or to love, or someone we need to talk to about Jesus, someone who needs a special touch of love, Lord, the night comes and we miss our opportunity. So this morning as we conclude this sacred time of worship, may it be a quiet resolve for each of us to be your servants, living each day with a sense of urgency to do what you've asked us to do. In Jesus' name, amen. Softly and tenderly, Jesus is calling each of us to be more effective disciples, to be more careful in our work for Him. Whatever it may be, may each of us respond as the Spirit leads us as we stand to sing this hymn. Just as I am without one plea, but that Thy blood shed for me and that thou bids me come to thee O Lamb of God I come I come just as I am and waiting to rid my soul of one dark blot to thee whose blood can cleanse each spot O Lamb of God I come I come Thank you so much for being here this morning again to uh, Freddie and to Michelle. Thank you so much for the beautiful music. In just a moment, we're going to have our prayer and then uh, we'll sing Praise God from whom all blessings flow as our concluding hymn. After we've sung that hymn, then please go out the one, one row at a time from the back and go all the way out as we continue to be safe. Will you bow with me in prayer? Lord, thank you so much for letting us be here this morning. It's meant so much to see each other, to touch each other, to know we're praying for each other. So thank you, dear Lord, for those downstairs and for this room, for the privilege of being a part of each other this morning as the family of faith. 
And now as we leave this room, remind each of us, you're calling us to be your servants. You've given us time today to do your work. But remind us the night comes when no one can work. In your holy name, amen. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above the heavenly host. Praise Father, Son.